So you want to take one. the shed. If you follow my channel, you will be aware that I build model steam engines. Now when I'm out exhibiting these engines, I often get asked by interested people and especially the youngsters, what sort of equipment do you need to be able to make these engines? So. I explained that getting into model engineering can be quite an expensive hobby, as the main component of any good workshop is of course the centre lathe machine, followed maybe by a pillar drill, or better still, a milling machine. Of course you're going to need cutting tools for the lathe, drill bits for the drill, end mills for the mill. And there's the hand tools, files, saws, hammers, mallets, dies and taps and maybe some nuts and bolts to start fixing your project together. For your project you're going to need some metal stock such as round stock, hex stock, flat stock, bar stock, billet stock. You're going to need brass stock, ground stock and then possibly a bandsaw to cut the stock to size. Then you're going to need some marking out tools, measuring tools, chemicals, glues, unobtainium, PPE equipment, first aid, Cornish pasties, flip flops, pickled onions, oxyacetylene, paint, stickle paint. So this answer usually blows the minds of the dads and the youngsters who have shown an interest in building an engine. Ah, yeah. No fear have you. Steam engines in your future, I see. Yes. Ah. Well, as you can see, all of that can be a bit off-putting. But if you are just dipping your toe into the model engineering world, then take a look at the models from EngineDIYShop.com. More on that later. So I used just a tiny, tiny sprinkle of unobtainium and this box arrived on my workbench instantaneously. Ah, oh, the power of having some unobtainium. Gone are those days of waiting around for the posty. So this was sent to me by EngineDIYShop.com who specialise in model steam engines and this is a steam beam engine model with a horizontal boiler and a centrifugal ball governor. It comes with a full set of instructional drawings and plans and has been very well packaged. These are the pre-assembled parts packaged at the top and that's obviously the flywheel that's the beam assembly and then this is what looks like the valve block and the cylinder and of course this is the flyball governor which looks very nice indeed actually and well this must be the eccentric and the spool valve spindle so yeah next out is the boiler now this looks really really nice very lovely and shiny very nice. Beautiful. And it looks like we've got a couple of bearing blocks, a brass pulley, and that's probably the, uh, oh, I'm not sure. Well, that looks like the main connector crank, and that is quite lovely too. Um, something else here, I'm not sure what that is. Oh, and of course a box full of, uh, well, fixing screws, uh, by the looks of things. Oop, got that the wrong way round. So we've got some bearings, some standoffs, some more standoffs, some belts and stuff. Ah, and these are the fixing screws. Most of them look like M3. So yeah. 
I'm not sure what this is just yet. This looks to be the actual firebox. And in here is a set of tools and washers and belts and stuff. Oh and a pair of tweezers as well. These look like they're part of the burner again. And obviously that's the fuel container tray for the burner. Cool. And the base. Yep, that's very nice. It's got a nice sort of textured powder coated finish. Yeah, it looks good. Anyway, so I guess the first thing to do is to have a quick look at the moorings. It seems to be in a 16 stage pictorial build, so I guess we should start at number one. Or of course I could just assemble it by using the magic of unobtainium. Oop, maybe not. So first of all, I'm gonna set out the screws, take them out the little packages and put them into some sort of tray. This is the main axle shaft and some fixing screws. Little tiny grub screws as well. And lastly, a pair of flange bearings, which I guess are for the axle. So that's now all ready to go. Just need to get familiar with all the parts and then go somewhere nice and quiet and have a sit down and really study the drawings. I do like a little bit of music while I'm working. This is the cylinder and valve block assembly and it's very nicely put together. The hole here is for the spool valve which operates the engine. And there are two intersecting pipes, one for the exhaust and one for the input. And these have been soldered into the block. And there is a little blanking plug which has been soldered into the central hole, which was obviously drilled right through into the base of the cylinder to allow the steam to enter and exit the cylinder when the engine is running. And yeah, it's very neat and nicely made. The cylinder is also soldered onto the block, which has got a little drain valve to release any condensate when starting the engine. And of course, the fixing holes in the base. All the tools are provided with the kit, such as this funky multi-spanner and three hex keys to fit the supplied nuts and bolts. The tools are great, but for me it's a little bit fiddly due to my arthritic fingers, so I'm going to use a small socket driver and my hexagon screwdriver tools, which just makes it a little bit easier for me to handle. But everything is in the kit, which you need to build the engine. Now the beam is a lovely brass casting, which has already been assembled, as you can see. It's got these lovely cast recesses inside the beam, and well, yeah, it's just really, really nicely made. It has this lovely six bar parallel motion linkage, which was invented by James Watt in 1784, and it allows the piston to move up and down, remaining parallel to the cylinder which allows the power to be transferred to the beam, which moves in a motion of an arc.
The piston and rod are also pre-assembled and it's a perfect fit in the bore. A very beautiful and well-built assembly. Once fitted, you can make small adjustments to both the valve block and the engine column from the underside, which will allow you to then set the beam so that it drops down under its own weight and it's not binding at any point. The spool valve has a cutout in the shaft which allows the transfer of steam into and out of the cylinder between the input and exhaust ports. This is connected to a stainless steel laser cut valve rod bearing the eccentric strap itself. It has a split at the back so it clamps tightly onto the surface of a flanged bearing which is fitted to the eccentric. This is an interesting and clever design solution. The clamping action also allows for slight adjustment for fine tuning the engine timing. The crank connecting rod connects the beam to the crank disc and I must say this is quite a beautiful little brass casting with a lovely tapered fish belly design which really adds to the features of this engine. The flyball governor also comes pre-assembled and is a lovely piece of engineering. The chassis looks to be water or laser cut and it's very nice indeed. The drive shafts utilise flange bearings on both the top and the bottom and it has this lovely set of bevel gears which are very smooth in operation. The firebox was then assembled in readiness for the boiler.
Now this boiler is a really nice piece of kit. Again, it comes pre-assembled and it's made from brass tube with a central bolt which runs right through the boiler, which holds the end cap secure. It has a large water level window and utilizes O-rings and rubber washers to seal the boiler rather than being soldered together. And this also allows disassembly for maintenance. Again, another great idea. There is a safety valve built in, which when removed doubles as the filler hole. Do not unscrew the section below, as the securing nut will fall into the boiler and it will have to be taken apart to refit it. There is a lovely steam whistle in the centre with a lever to operate it. And of course, there is the valve with a lovely cast brass handwheel to allow you to control the speed of the engine. The boiler fits snugly into the firebox and then these two stainless steel straps can be screwed down to secure it in place. A short silicon hose is supplied and this fits over the supply pipe from the boiler and then connects up to the flyball governor. So there it is all built up and ready for steaming. Well, now's the time to run this lovely beam engine. So the first thing we need to do is remove the filler cap and add some water. You can use distilled water or even filtered rainwater. I use this little syringe to fill the boiler so I can get a good accurate measurement of how much water I need to put in. And you only want to fill the tank up to halfway, which is approximately 50 millilitres. Otherwise it'll take longer to boil and there's less space above the water to create a good head of steam. I did this in the first run and it took ages to get the engine running and when it did run it exhausted the head of steam quickly so in this case less is more. Now I did consider adding a few little sprinkles of unobtainium into the boiler tank just to increase the pressure but I was a bit scared that it might just explode. Now the filler cap doubles as the pressure relief valve, so always check the valve is free and the spring is functional before you reinsert it back into the boiler. The burner tray uses methylated spirits or bioethanol, but just be careful not to fill it right up to the top. About 20 millilitres is a good measure which will burn for about 15 minutes. Place the burners back in and make sure the wicks touch the bottom of the tray to enable you to use all of the fuel inside the container.
Give them a minute or so to absorb the fuel and then light the wicks. Now, a word of caution here. To be able to get the burner tray underneath the boiler, you have to tilt it forward slightly. But this, of course, means fuel can spill out, and you don't want to do that. Trust me, I've been there. Now I've found the simplest method to prevent spillage is to tilt the whole boiler forward instead of tilting the fuel tray. No spills, no drama. After about three to four minutes you'll start to see bubbles and steam coming out of the steam whistle. So it's time to give it a toot. Wow, that was a lot more impressive than I was ever expecting. Now just hang on a minute, Aid. Come on, you're pulling my leg. That's more like it. It really is a lovely little steam whistle. Once the pressure release valve starts to bubble, you'll know there's now enough head of steam to be able to start to run the engine. As you open the steam valve, you'll see the bubbles being released from the water due to the drop in pressure, much like the bubbles from an ocean diver which expand as they approach the ocean surface. A nice visual science demonstration of vapour pressure in a liquid, which makes this large water level window a very nice feature of this model. Now, as you can imagine, hot steam going into a cold engine is going to condense back into water. So you'll need to spin the engine over by hand a few times to allow the water and hot steam to pass through and heat up the metal parts of the engine. After a few spins, the engine will begin to run, spattering hot water and steam from the exhaust. Any condensate in the cylinder can be released via this little valve, although to be fair, most of it seems to clear from the exhaust itself. Once the engine is warmed up and running at a steady pace, you can then reduce the amount of steam coming out of the boiler and run the engine as slow as possible. This not only creates an attractive slow speed of the engine, but it also allows the boiler to be able to keep up with the steam demand from the engine. As you can see, it's really quite a beautiful thing running on steam. The elegant motion of the parallel linkages and the nodding of the beam is really quite beautiful to watch. And the spinning balls of the governor and the crank turning the flywheel adds further interest to this lovely model. A little drop of steam oil in the top of the cylinder 
allows the engine to remain lubricated. Now, as I said, the boiler is only tiny, so it does require that you run the engine as slow as possible to make full use of the running time of the boiler, which on a tank of fuel is about 15 minutes, including warm-up time. Now, if you were wondering what that chirping noise was in the background while I was filming this, well, that is my little workshop buddy, my little blue budgery car, Marty McFly. Say hello, Marty. My little budgie, aren't you, Marty? Hey, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. Say hello to all the viewers. Hello, viewers. I'm not a very good ventriloquist, am I? Who was a booty? Well, I still haven't quite mastered that whistle. <laughs> now I do get some people who ask me to show the engine running for a little bit longer on my videos. So I've included about two and a half minutes here of just the engine running. So if you want to fast forward this, you can. I put a countdown on the screen so you can zip through it if desired. And for those who enjoy it, then please enjoy. It's a real pleasure to run. I've run it a couple of dozen times already now and it doesn't disappoint. The smells of the burning fuel and the sounds of the boiler hissing and the gurgling of the exhaust all add to its charm and appeal. There you go. And yeah, just one burner left running but very low. This steam beam engine with horizontal boiler and flyball governor is manufactured by Retrol, which is a subsidiary company of Engine DIY and EngineDIYShop.com. They have a fascinating range of steam and internal combustion engines, which you can build on your kitchen table without a need for a workshop or tools. 
Their products have gained a trusted following from model engineer enthusiasts and collectors the world over. And after building this myself, I can see just how appealing these kith engines can be. And they don't just stop at engines. They offer all kinds of steam fittings for your build, such as valves, pipe fittings, water pumps, governors, lubricators, etc. And they also have a range of complete steam boilers. And I must say that this 1 litre steam boiler would be just perfect for my small wigwag and model engines. I just need to get my hands on some more of that lovely, lovely unobtainium. Now this is currently on sale with a 25% discount from the original price. I'm not sure how long that discount will last, but if you order from the website, you can also get an extra discount on top using the time limited code in the description below. So, if you've never built a steam engine, and you want to build a steam engine, but you don't really have the facilities to build a steam engine, well now you can build a steam engine, very simply and easily, with this kit. I've enjoyed both building, running and making this video about it, and also burning my fingers on it. It's just great fun. It reminds me of my old mammoth steam tractor that I used to have as a kid. It's certainly a toy of the future and a toy of the past, because, well, kids don't really play with dangerous things anymore. But I really think they ought to, because it instills a wondrous fascination and a respect of the industrial heritage of steam machines. So, what are you waiting for? Get steaming! Well, that's about all from me for now. And, as always, thanks for watching!